Bridgerton costumes don't just define the fashion in the Regency era, as the dresses also say a lot about the characters and what to expect in future seasons. However, how this works and the many messages you've missed from the outfits will all be revealed to you. At the end of season one alone, the costume designers in Bridgerton created over 7,500 costume pieces, and main characters like Daphne had about 104 dresses, which all had some coded meanings, and many more costumes have been designed for the show since then. However, many critics and viewers of Bridgerton have argued that the dresses in the show don't fully represent the Regency era, and that's because these dresses have a mix of modernity and hidden details that can only be noticed by attentive eyes. So, before we dive deeper into how Bridgerton dresses send messages and how the teaser videos from season 3 have shown us what to expect in the show just by studying the costumes, let's get into what the color of the dresses means, especially for the families in Bridgerton. The first thing you would notice with the costumes in Bridgerton is that members of the same family tend to complement each other. Before designing their outfits, there's a color palette for each family, which is followed and used to produce their outfits. So, you can tell the difference between families just from the color and style of clothes they wear. A perfect example of this is the Bridgertons and the Featheringtons. The Bridgertons are known for their pale colors, which come in blue, green, silver, and light-toned pink dresses. Their dresses are always calm and easy to look at. Funnily enough, these dull colors showcase the Bridgertons' importance and high societal standards. The costume designer for the show, Ellen Mirajnik, said, they're the prominent family of the social season, so we wanted their color palette to be powdery. These pale blues, silvers, and greens that feel like whispers of color. Then, the colors aren't just random, as they are selected to portray the Bridgerton family's importance in society. According to the production designer Will Hughes-Jones, the Bridgertons wore the Wedgwood blue the most out of all the different blues they wore. However, this Wedgwood blue was a costly fabric color that only fine English people wore in that era. But then, the Featheringtons are the complete opposite of the dull colors that Bridgertons are known for. The Featheringtons adorn themselves in bright colors like pink, yellow, and green, which exposes their struggles as outsiders in upper-class society. Although their status is defined by the color they choose to wear their dresses, their mother also significantly influences how the family should be seen in bold dresses. Ellen explains why this is so, saying, Portia sets the tone for them as a family and their color palette is overly citrus because she wants those girls to be seen. It might be too much, but that's not on purpose. She thinks they look beautiful. Although the colors look unflattering on the girls, especially Penelope, their mother thinks it's the best way to show off their money. The Featheringtons are new money and very much strangers to the high fashion world, so the mother assumes their outfits must be loud to announce their presence, and with this, everyone can quickly tell they aren't as used to money as the rest of the high-class members of the ton. These differences are very noticeable between Eloise and Penelope as they are much closer, which makes the comparison comparison between their dresses obvious. In many of their scenes, Eloise wears a pale color, while Penelope is always in her boring but bright yellow gown. Speaking about colors, Penelope had it the worst among the Featheringtons, and that's because everyone, including herself, could see that the yellow dress didn't compliment her, but her mother's decision was always the final say. But the crazy thing about Penelope's yellow clothes is that there is more to it than her mother's influence. Yellow in the Bridgerton era could mean many good things because of its brightness. So the color can be related to a sign of hope, good energy, and a welcoming spirit. Interestingly enough, Penelope is all these things, especially when meeting her for the first time. The character loves to be chatty with Eloise and can also be kind, which was obvious from her interactions with Marina Thompson when she joined their household. However, a closer look at a yellow dress also offers another exciting meaning 
meaning, a warning. Yellow is so bright that it reminds people that not all that glitters can be trusted. So, a character who wears yellow often tries to warn the people around them to be cautious. And again, that perfectly describes Penelope, who's much more than what people could see on the surface. Eloise thought Penelope was just her friend without realizing she was Lady Whistledown. Also, when everyone was wondering who could be Lady Whistledown, they never knew it was Penelope who was always watching, listening, and observing to get what to use in her gossip publications. So, Bridgerton dresses can also give viewers spoilers to a character, and you will get to know more details about all of that soon. Interestingly, season two hinted about season three using one of Penelope's dresses. Penelope, who is usually in yellow outfits, got to wear a green dress in season two, and even though it didn't make much difference, it gave an important message you probably missed out on. The green outfit showed that a union between the Featheringtons and the Bridgertons will be happening in season three, and that's because Penelope's color was yellow while Collins was blue. So these two colors form green if mixed, and that dress was trying to tell viewers to get ready for the marriage between Penelope and Colin. Also, the cloth still had a tint of yellow, which means there would still be some obstacles obstacles ahead before the two could become one. In the same scene, Colin is wearing a blue coat, which shows that he's completely unaware of the enormous crush Penn has on him, and he isn't even considering anything relating to marrying Penelope. Colors are also attached to royalty, especially with the Hastings in Bridgerton 1, which is yellow and gold. And there were times that Simon dressed in these colors, mostly when he was at his office and seeing over the affairs of his estate. Aside from that, Simon was usually seen in dark clothes that portrayed elegance, but with a sad background. In Bridgerton, the Duke had serious issues with his father, which made him vow to end his family line with him. So, a closer look at his outfits exposed all of these struggles, which is not so easy to notice. The mystery behind the dresses in Bridgerton keeps getting fascinating as you discover that even marriage can change a person's outfit. In season one, before Daphne married the Duke of Hastings, she wore a calming blue dress. However, after marrying Simon, whose royal color is red, Daphne's outfits began to change to purple. And it's no coincidence because mixing blue with red will turn out to be purple. So any changes in a person's life during the Bridgerton Regency era must be reflected in the choice and color of clothing. By mixing her family color with her husband's, Daphne showed she was ready to start her own family. As we keep discussing the significance of the dresses and colors in Bridgerton, we will soon expose the secrets that season three outfits have revealed based on their meanings, and they all have some unexpected messages. Lady Danbury also had her fair share of outfit transitions regarding marriage and growth. Fans of Bridgerton who have also seen Queen Charlotte got an insightful backstory of Lady Danbury's life during her marriage to the man she wasn't attracted to. As said earlier, gold is a royal color, and Lady Danbury wore a lot of gold when she was still married to Lord Danbury. However, when she became a widow, she was so happy that she instantly changed her wardrobe to purple, showcasing her freedom from marriage. Then she started forming her identity as Lady Danbury when she switched to the burgundy color, which everyone in her house began to wear. But as time passed, traces of gold started to make their way into Lady Danbury's wardrobe again. And it was at this moment that she began to tease Violet Bridgerton about whether or not she knew other men privately other than her deceased husband. So that gold color exposes that Lady Danbury was no longer afraid of what she did while younger. The costume designers explained better, saying that Lady Danbury bringing back gold in her outfits was to announce her victory over her past and claim it, which was obvious in her walk and confidence. Bridgerton could have drawn inspiration from the Regency era while putting together the costumes, but they also went a bit extra with it. Aside from creating relatable styles, Bridgerton drew inspiration from popular films, celebrities, and even royal families like Princess Diana. The characters sometimes had to style their outfits with hats, and the royal family hat designs have been a source of inspiration for the show. For some of the outfits during steamy scenes in the show, one of the showrunners and executive producers, Van Dusen, said they were inspired by the TV adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, which aired in 1995. In season one, Simon wore a white shirt soaked in the rain while having fun with Daphne during their honeymoon. The same same thing happened with Anthony in season two, who wore a white shirt soaked in water in another spicy scene. And all of these were
stories were influenced by one of Mr. Darcy's scenes in Pride and Prejudice, where he was wearing a soaked white shirt in a romantic setting. Like how season two predicted that Colin and Penelope would be the next couple, the teaser videos have also shown some hints on what viewers can expect. In one of the recently released videos of Penelope and Colin, we see that Penn's outfit colors are beginning to transform as she can be seen wearing blue, which is a Bridgerton tasteful blue. The mirror scene also means that Penelope's style is starting to reflect her love and devotion to Colin. But what's more exciting about this upcoming scene is how the dress was cut out. In the past seasons, Penn's dress was cut in a way that hides her beautiful and elaborate features. However, this sneak peek means Penn isn't a naive girl anymore, but a woman who has fully realized her potential. As Penn is coming out to be the girl she has always wanted to be, Eloise will also be transforming daringly, as the sneak peek to one of her season three dresses has revealed. There's a flower pattern cut out on Eloise's dress, and following the novels, the flower looks precisely like the Meadow Cranes bill Sir Philip signed on the letter to Eloise. Then, the flowers on Eloise's dress look like they were pressed down, just like they were on the letter. From the books, Eloise's love interest would be Sir Philip, and the show could definitely pick up that. So Eloise's dress, which has that flower, could tell fans another exciting detail to expect later in the show. Aside from the flower, which is passing a message, the dress has drawn inspiration from Eliza Doolittle, played by Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady. Like Eloise, Eliza also hates following societal standards and always wants to push for a difference. So the daring look from Eloise Eloise's dress sneak peek conveys what to expect from her character based on how Eliza was. In Eliza's dresses too, there were always flower patterns drawn on them, and this couldn't in any way get more relatable to Eloise. And this isn't the first time Eliza will influence Bridgerton's outfits, as it has inspired the styling of Daphne's white dress as far back as season one. Kate and Anthony Bridgerton will also play a big part in season three, and Kate's teaser dresses are already whispering what is to come. One of the first looks at Kate shows her wearing a slightly off-shoulder dress with a lower waistline, which is very strange to the Regency era. Also, the outfit exposes the back and the neckline is see-through, with many hints hidden in these features. The outfit color combination also speaks a lot about Kate's new upgrade. However, this dress might look like a regular fashionable costume. Greek and Roman culture may have inspired it. The designer in the series, Madame Delacroix, is quite famous for piece together outfits for high society. It's believed that the character got her inspiration from the Three Graces in Greek mythology. The Three Graces are more popular for throwing unique and meaningful balls, and Kate wore the dress to a ball, which says a lot. Another reason why the outfit has so many flattering features could mean it's the first time Kate and Anthony have gotten to attend a public event together since their marriage. Dressing that way could translate to Kate enjoying every bit of the romantic acts she's gotten introduced to since the honeymoon. Funnily enough, Kate hasn't always had an elaborate wardrobe, especially at the beginning of season two. Her dresses were usually dark and sad, while Edwina's were bright. So Kate's dresses earlier in season two were to pass the message that she was past the marriageable age, while Edwina's portray youthfulness and availability to suitors. Her dark colored outfits weren't because she preferred them, but because she had no choice but to show people she was an old spinster. There is even a scene where Kate was admiring a glamorous gown, but sadly her time to shine had passed by Bridgerton standards until Anthony met her. The sparkles on Bridgerton dresses are also there for many reasons beyond adornment. As you already know, Bridgerton didn't follow the rules while making costumes in the Regency era, but they ensured every outfit had a meaning or influence behind it. Although set in the 1810s, Bridgerton went into the future for fabrics that didn't exist then. Sequ Twins, glitters, and pearls weren't in vogue then, as any form of shiny thing on clothes had to be attached one after the other. And the exciting thing is that Bridgerton also did this with the music in the show. So modern culture is one of the inspirations behind the costumes, all elegantly and carefully put together. Also, clothes for the high society were tough to make in the Regency era. The costume designers for the show struggled to put thousands of outfits together, which still explains the complexities behind making them. Most of the outfits are designed with bare hands, and it takes many hours to gather the flowers on dresses together during the making process. It gets even crazier when you realize 
None of the costumes were rented or borrowed as everything was made from scratch solely for the show. So dresses in Bridgerton are more important than they look as they are a big deal in identifying and separating the lower class from the upper class. That was why the costume designers ensured that the outfits were more glamorous and luxurious than the usual outfits they wore in the era. The corsets that stood out were contracted out to a corset making expert, Mr. Pearl. The costumes are so unique that they are guarded jealousy as cast members aren't even allowed to keep any as souvenirs because they are more than materials to be owned. 